Yeah, man. Flat Drop 101 and go. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> Love to take a seat, man. A lot of uh, cats on YouTube dropping that 432 low fives and different chill mixes, man. So, love to everybody, man. In that, in that 4329 up, man. We all the way up. You know it, man. I'm in my favorite book, man. World's Beyond the Pose, man. You know, <laughs> these theories are so like ridiculous, right? They, you could read them a thousand times and it's still gonna sound ridiculous, right? That all the balls you think you see are just tail eyes <laughs> from the tail eyes go, right? Cause you really think there's a bunch of balls flying around you. You think you're on a ball? I mean, some people, some people. I'm just here to tell you, man, you ain't on no spinning ball. Welcome to Flat Drop 101 <laughs> with Contra. Let's get it. We're going to jump around a little bit like we always do in this book. You always say I'm going to read a cover, <laughs> cover to cover. And it's, we always jump around chapters, man, you know. This is a great place to start right here. Page 35. Worlds Beyond a Pole by F. Amadio Giannini. Nowhere throughout the length and width of our terrestrial land and sky or throughout the endless land and sky of the created universe do disks, spheres, or globes actually exist. You heard that, my knife? I mean, he's just gonna come out swinging, right? He's just gonna come out with a with a left hook on your on your mind bone, because you would swear that there are spheres 
in the universe. Because that's all the models we've been given and the constant brainwashing with these images, CGI. You know? This scholar right here, when you check his background, I mean, he's working all with the U.S. Navy in the 1920s. He got his own, you know what I'm saying, stratospheric balloons and rockets and, you know, V2s, and they're finding more, you know, uh, terrestrial areas than what was previously known when they made that globe. But they're not going to make the globe no bigger because they find more land, right? So even if you're on a globe, <clears throat> my naga, even if you refuse to get off your ball, right? You believe NASA, you believe science, you don't think they'll lie to you. You think that this is archaic, like everything we drop on IG or, or, or YT. They always put, oh, the flat earth is an archaic model. Okay. Here goes your experts again. Talking about shit you don't even know about. Because ain't nobody exploring no more. But you probably really think that. All right, so if you think you're on a ball, at least account for more land. Don't you see how subconsciously you start going against ex exploration because you want to stay on a ball so bad? At least support the fact that they got to make your ball a lot bigger if they find a lot more land. Not just land that belongs in the ball, but land that's supposed to be out, ain't supposed to exist, right? Because it's not within the mapped area of our oceans, right? They find more ocean, more water, more of that, more of that mem sauce. <laughs> Yo, Seth, we popping off. They find more of that mem sauce, right? Which comes with more land, more vegetation. You know what I mean? This book is called Worlds Beyond the Pole. And I just want to get this off my chest bone because I'm about to go in on this out of Africa theory. Like, we, you know, we, we've we been kind of slacking on, on, on this hijack over here. So we're going to have to let, you know, let it be known and told. But when you think about, <clears throat> when you think about just having um, more land beyond the pole. And you realize all this is connected. You're going to have to really discount this theory right away because just by default of there being more land beyond the pole, you're out of Africa theory. All Nagas must be from this one place. and All melanated people are only from one place. And Ama, Ama, Mama just got one place on her entire earth body that produces natural melanin original people that all original people on the entire earth plane must come from Africa tell that to the Nagas uh, in the worlds beyond the poles you don't think there's more Nagas <laughs> out there somewhere <laughs> is you crazy come on man don't be so short sighted so what I'm saying is out of Africa come on man you're going to realize that when they found this, when they just called it back, back up to this ancient world here called America, right? They found a new world. These are worlds beyond a pole, but even within their poles, there was a new world that they discovered. <laughs> yeah, bull, bull crap, right? Malarkey, right? Malarkey, right? They didn't discover nothing. We was already here. Already here as far back as they want to get. We was already here. And if we was already here as far back as they want to get and let you know where your origin is. Out of Africa, I mean, every Naga can't be out of Africa, right? What about the worlds beyond the pole? What about the new world they just found called America? They found some different type of Nagas over here. They didn't say, oh, these are the same Nagas that's right there in Africa. They said, who are these Nagas? They got this Magi flow. They're looking for Preston John. We got it documented with the Portuguese, and that's why that investigation is so important, my Naga. We're getting right back in there, you know, installment number 71. This Preston John investigation is cutting through Hijack City like this, you know, the, the guts is pouring out of Hijack City with this Priest King Kandawi investigation. Because when you factor that in, <laughs> you're immovable. Because David is immovable. Presta is immovable. 
the Grand Con, near the Grand Con, yeah. Grand Con John, press the John. <laughs> it's immovable. You know, that's when you really get foundational. They found a different breed of Naga over here, right? They looking for Preston John, these Portuguese. They weren't, you know, settled on uh, Ethiopia over there for the priest king. They they looking through Asia. They, they looking everywhere, right? Come on, you got to read it. It's in the books. <laughs> love, to, love to the bread. Walk a flock, man. It's in the books. Just check the books. I got a whole laptop full of it. It's in the books. Just check the books, man. Hey, man. Love to carry, man. Yo, you over there, man. Uh, you know, checking the books on these hijacks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let them know, you know what I mean, that this is original flow, you know. They got the cognitive dissonance thinking that all Nagas must be out of Africa. And really, you know, you're talking about the seed of Abraham, you talking about Shem, my Nagi? Shem? You talking about <laughs> fruitful Shem, right? So, you know, the population that we were, that we were over here, you're just talking about a very populous, fruitful people. You know, these are the people that connect with the original. That there's no separation from them in Hawaii. They found us in a new world. We might as well have been in a world beyond a pole to them because their map, remember their maps, they just had their little spot, right? That was their world. You even find maps that have just Africa and Europe and all that and in a circle like it's its own world, right? It's a big circle around it. It's another world. That would be a ball to them. You know what I'm saying? The hijack's telling on themselves, man. These would be balls to them. Shalah, <clears throat> man, I'm popping off. Man. Managa, these will be balls. That's why they circle them. <laughs> then they circle North America and South America, and that's another circle, right? But then we got all that Greenland and Canada, Canada, like so much land. Greenland? We got maps with Greenland connected, you know, with North America or Canada, you know what I'm saying? So. You got a vast land, South America. You got a vast land of indigenous Nagas that's been here since uh, the primordial water, you know what I'm saying, released this particular, you know, terrestrial paradise out that mem sauce. Can no one take you off of this, man? So I say all that to say they found you in a new world. To them, it will be a ball. But you know it's a flat plane. <laughs> well, you know. And if you keep going straight, you find more flat plane, right? You find more land, more water. And all these spherical objects you think are real, you don't see them with your own eyes, some spherical thing. You just see a light, right? <laughs> this light could be a reflection. You see a moon. It, it could be reflecting. You know, there's theories on that as the moon is, the moon is a map that's showing all these other areas. You know, beyond the pole. No one's touching this. Because <laughs> we're right there on the hijack's neck bone with this world beyond the pole. That's why I can't leave it. You know, we're going to do some other things, man. You know, get, you know what I mean? Like, Flat Drop is where we started, really. You know, with the awareness community on Facebook. You know, shout out to Silas Nehemiah. And we really proved it with script. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll break it down and other things. And, you know what I'm saying? But we had them surrounded, you know what I'm saying, with proofs. So, you know, that <laughs> all we would do is pretty much battle rap all day, man, because so many Nagas, you know, were still just just now getting the clarity. They thought, oh, Flat Earth is a PSYOP. Like, nah, we're proving, like, if it's a PSYOP, it's like a 200-year, 300-year PSYOP because all these books we're pulling out are these professors and scholars arguing with John Hopkins and other universities in the 1800s. <laughs> man, what's that? William Christensen, shout out to Ty Battle for dropping that. Dropped a bomb <laughs> on uh, John Hopkins University, you know, with 100 proofs or 200 proofs. I mean, man, uppercuts and body blow that they're on a, a flat, relatively flat, stationary plane. Clearly, you got mountains, you got layers, 
the hollow earth situation plays because you got a lot of inner inner earth, right? Because you just you talk about a realm. So you got a realm beneath you and a realm beneath that and a realm above you and a realm above that. You're just talking octaves. You're talking sound waves, vibration. It's all happening. Yeah. They found a different frequency in Naga over here. A different vibration. You know? But it was at war already with other vibrations, right? That was trying to hijack the frequency. Let's get it. You, know, you don't see no spheres out your eyeball. You look at, you got to look through the concave, through the concave, through the concave. Love the Templar to find that sphere, man. Don't, them, them, them pictures ain't, ain't real. They lying to you, man. They're optical illusions. Let's read about it. Nowhere throughout the length and width of our terrestrial land and sky or throughout the endless land and sky of the created universe do disks, spheres, or globes actually exist despite their seeming existence. They are entirely, entirely, entirely lens created. They represent the most striking examples of lens illusions ever known to man. Woo. Lens illusions, man. Because you're not, first of all, your eyeball is a concave eyeball. You're looking through a round situation. You, you got to know you don't really see things as they are. you just thinking, oh, yeah, God created eyeballs and that's how it's supposed to be. That's how you're supposed to see Maybe in the matrix, <laughs> left to natural by law, you know, but you're only seeing less than 1% of the visible light. <laughs> How much sound frequency is going around, going around us, you know what I'm saying? So after you look out that concave, you got the, or is it convex? Concave, you know what I'm talking about. And then you got the uh, telescope with another concave, you know what I mean? And then... You know, <laughs> the Templar, you know what I'm saying, ends up being a whole nother concave, you know what I mean? So, damn, man, that's a lot of optical illusion, man. You got a lot of hijack if you want to see clearly. You can't see through your eyeballs, you know, clearly. You're going to have to see things, you know what I'm saying, through that inner dragon of yours, you know, because that's what it means to see clearly. We're talking etymologies. So there is nowhere throughout the length I got to say it again for my nag in the back of the class. Nowhere throughout the length and width of our terrestrial land and sky. Nowhere. Or throughout the endless land and sky of the created universe. Of all the created universe, there are no disc, spheres, or globes anywhere. I know what you're thinking. What about the sun? What about the moon? It looks like a disc, you know? I don't know if he's counting that or discounting that, but, man, what if, what if he's, you know, taking that into consideration? I mean, that's, what, you know, what does it mean? What does it mean, man? At least you, you got to be willing to say, what does it mean? To surf this wave, don't come over here for the information. Come for the vibration and surf the wave. Come when you're ready to relax and have a couple thoughts, man. You know, just have a couple thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Not, not too many mind. You know, not too much mind. You know, but just vibe and see things differently. You got to be willing to see it differently. They are entirely lens created. And they represent the most striking examples of lens illusions ever known to man. Therefore, the illustrations inner blue sky, horizontal curves, and the outer luminous sky curves are intended to indicate the deceptions experienced in observation. Neither the earth nor any part of the universe about the earth curves in agreement with the deception of curvature here presented. Neither the earth nor any part of the universe about the earth curves 
<laughs> there ain't no balls. It's no curvature. You just keep going straight. You're you're in a realm of existence, a realm, a flat plane of existence. Hawa did not put you on a ball to spin you around for eternity, man. That is hijack city. Can you imagine doing that experiment? How messed up, how effed up it would be to the little inhabitants you put in that ball and you start whipping this ball around and spinning it at over a thousand miles per hour, which they say the earth is supposed to be spinning over a thousand miles per hour, right? Huh? Can you imagine putting a little hamster in a ball? <laughs> oh, but gravity, magical gravity, that's still a theory, not a law. But we accept it and it's being taught as a law and that's where I got an issue. I don't got an issue with you teaching my children the theory of gravity if it's presented as a theory and you balance it, you know, even counter it with other theories, you know, but to teach it to them like it's a fact when gravity is a theory, not a law, it's never been scientifically proven. It's not a law. So you can't have your ball without a law. Without gravity, you can't, you know, you can't account for all this spinning on a wobble, whirling through space, they say, NASA says, at 67,000 miles per hour. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of movement. And we just chilling and LeBron's just dunking, but this gravity is supposed to be keeping all the water from flying off. But LeBron's just dunking. <laughs> but this super gravity is so strong, it's crushing the water, but it's not crushing us. Because we just, you know, birds are just flying in the sky. The water is just still in some of them rivers and ponds. It's just still water, you know. <laughs> but this water is supposed to be. They want you to believe this water is spinning around at a thousand miles per hour, whirling through space at 67,000 miles per hour. And not the gravity of space, but the gravity of Earth. <laughs> the little bitty ball going through infinite space. The little ball's gravity from the core is crushing everything. Even if it was crushing with some powerful force, it would be chaotic. It wouldn't be just calm and peaceful, you know what I'm saying? It would be a chaotic force pulling you down, if that's the case. But, ooh. I mean, if you're talking about the Earth spinning, then which way is gravity pulling? People are upside down on the other side of the ball. I guess they're saying that gravity's pulling everything to the center of the ball. But that would be more like magnetic, you know. Now you're just talking electromagnetism. This natural force we're talking about. Not gravity. Electromagnetism or just simple density in physics. Something that is denser than the atmosphere will fall because of density. Not because of gravity. Physics does not account for any law of gravity. Physics accounts for the law of density. Repeatable observable science. Gravity is their God. The capital G, man, gravity. But it's just a theory. So you're in the mind bone. You're in the mind of a hijack. So without gravity, you ain't got no ball, man. That water's flying off. The people are just whirling around in that spinning ball going at 67,000 miles per hour. You got to believe in this, man. You got to believe in this guy, right? There's no proof. You don't see no live feed from no satellite. The ones they shooting to Pluto, they shooting to Mars. They ain't turning around one time and took a snapshot, an actual picture, because, oh, it's so big. You know, yeah, they're telling you the truth. It's so big. <laughs> you can't get the whole thing in one shot. That's why there's no picture of it. It's a realm. It's endless. There's no picture of it. All you see from the independent balloon experiments of people putting balloons in the way up in the, in the stratosphere, atmosphere, you know, they take a picture and it's just a flat plane of blueness. It just keeps going. There's no end to it. There's no beginning to it. So imagine 
when you keeps going. You know, imagine those Nagas over there, man. When we talk about creation in Genesis, was it the creation of the entire all the earth, you know, all the worlds, or was it the creation of your particular earth pond, right? Earth pond one, if you want to call it that. How many earth ponds are there with geothermic situations and vortexes with their own sun, their own moons? Just like they say, planets got their own suns and moons. They're telling you the truth. You keep going straight, you find more land, more water, and you find more suns and more moons forming geothermic pockets to create this circle in the ice that now thaws into water, sometimes cold water because it's still, you know, still connected with all that ice. <laughs> but then, you know, you got the sun popping off more heat, you know what I'm saying, in certain areas, and you got certain paradises. Managa, more suns, not just one. So was that the creation of all the suns on the fourth day, or is this your particular let there be light? And this might enlighten you <laughs> to, uh, you know, just just a perspective. We call it dragonfly perspective around here. Let's get a little bit more, Monagas. We're having a good time reading Worlds Beyond the Poles, F. Amadeo Giannini. And this is what you came here for, man. Condra is popping off. Yeah, Take a Seat is keeping it groovy. Check them out on YouTube. Take a Seat. Got some nice little uh, vibes, man. All right, so I think we've established <laughs> there are no disc, spheres, or globes out in the created universe. Neither the Earth nor any part of the universe about the Earth curves. In, in agreement with the deceptions of curvature here presented. We may grant such curves realism only insofar as they have been created by the lens. Ooh, that's it. All them balls, some spheres don't exist. No lens can escape producing a curve at the proper distance on the horizontal or the perpendicular. Whoa. <laughs> Got it. We gonna learn about lenses today, my nugget. We gonna learn about lenses today. <laughs> and here's what you came to learn about lenses. No lens can escape producing a curve at the proper distance on the horizontal or the perpendicular. So that lens has to produce curvature. You ever look at those fisheye lenses? Right? All that, uh, what was that dude that did that jump? You know what I'm talking about? He caught himself jumping into the earth and all that. <laughs> that thing was just a flat plane, but that, that uh, fisheye lens, that little bubble eye there, gave the earth super curvature. So much that it was inverting curvature. It wasn't even just, you know, normal curvature. In certain shots, the curvature inverted itself. So how to, you know, explain that? So what you're telling me is that you're manipulating curvature, even inverting curvature, unre unrealistic curvature. What's wrong with y'all cameras that you need that much damn curvature? Even at the expense of looking corny, fake and crazy, you're letting us know that this is not reality based on the extreme curvature. So that's like a psychological ploy where it's like, oh, okay, and subconsciously, you know, you're seeing all this inverted curvature. So, you know, whatever his name, Felix, whatever his name is, that did that, you know, stratosphere leap, uh, tallest leap from whatever little, you know, uh, airplane, <laughs> you know, they took up there. I mean, so like subconsciously, you know, you ain't looking at no curvature. Why can't they have a regular damn camera? <laughs> Why can't they take a live feed of the earth spinning? 
It's 2021. They talking about they ain't got no technology to get to the moon, but we got Mars and, and SpaceX talking all crazy, right? Man missions of what the, the, they can't even get to the moon. Why are we, why aren't we pressing them <laughs> on this moon situation so we can see how much they put into fake in this? Let's see what kind of budget you got to fake this in 2021 during the pandemic. Come on, man. Keep that stuff real, man. <laughs> We're talking about real things, not fake curvature. As previously related, the physical structure and properties of all lenses demand that the curvature be created. Then the lens created curvature is, is accentuated by concept into the full bodied and isolated globe. So it's accentuated by the concept, which is what? Brainwashing the calm, right? That's the accentuation of it all because you get accentuated with that globe in your first grade classroom and all the cartoons got it, Dora got it, everybody got the globe. You really believe in the globe unless you got some, you know, uh, <laughs> aware nagas, aware parents, you know what I'm saying, checking that stuff right at the door like, nah, man, that's hijacked. Then they never had that thought really formulated, you know, it, it never formed a complete it never got complete, you know, it never got solid in their brain because once it gets solid, it's damn near impossible to remove. The fact that you knock is popping off lets me know how special you are. You know what I'm saying? Let's you know how special you are because we all were taught the brainwash. You know what I mean? We all, my knock, I wanted to be an astronaut. I done told y'all this. <laughs> it hurt my heart, man, that this was all some fake bull crap. What are they doing with the money, though, other than the propaganda? Yeah, see, once, once the cat, you know, it, it is revealed, the sly fox is revealed, you know, folks is going to sue these people, man, for all this, <laughs> you know, uh, straight up robbery, you know what I'm saying, with these billion dollar contracts and all this stuff, and you know what I mean, just... Everyone's back this stuff. The government's back this lie. You know what I'm saying? Stanley Kubrick, you know what I mean? He was trying to, you know, <laughs> put some hints out there. But, you know, you, you see what happened to him. It was a stage, man. Hey, go dig on 2001 A Space. Uh, what's it called? A Space Odyssey, 2001. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, man. Just, just dig on it. Neither the earth nor any part of the universe about the earth curves in agreement with the deception. We may grant curves such realism only insofar as they have been created by lenses. No lens can escape producing a curve at the proper distance on the horizontal or the perpendicular. As previously related, the physical structure and properties of all lenses demand that the curve be created. Then the lens created curve is accentuated by concept into the full-bodied and isolated globe or sphere as distance from the photographed or telescopically observed area or object is increased. There is in reality no such curvature to the endless sky and land continuous throughout the universe. The only such curvature that might possibly exist in which we could never hope to determine would be that of a conceptual or conceptual nature having the universe as a whole curve in infinite time and space. All right, that's the same thing we be saying. And there's some uh, great folk out there, you know, connecting that's the, uh, what they call the cosmic egg type of flow. But yeah, that, it ain't the earth that's a ball. But when you look at the universe as a whole, or the realm as a whole, it might be within some egg type thing, you know what I'm saying? You know, whatever they call it, you know, that's the whole universe, not just the earth curving. It's not the earth curve. It's just the, you know, back to electromagnetic magnetism. You know what I'm saying? You got this electromagnetic cosmic, you know, what they call cosmic egg, but, you know, really a force field or some type of, you know, energetic field, you know, you know free flow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Um, but yeah, now you're just talking vortexes and magnetism and all these other great topics. But the earth being a ball, nah, man. But that's what, that's the double talk. Maybe the universe has some curvature, you know? I mean, hey, but that's just conceptual. You know, that's something that we can't really prove on any major basis and you can't deny it on any major basis. So let's just get these noggins off this ball, shall we? <laughs> you know what I mean? And you figure out the rest from there, man. For the dismile. The only such curvature that might possibly exist and which we could never hope to determine would be that of a conceptual nature having the universe as a whole curve in infinite time and space, granting such an unverifiable arrangement for the connecting universe whole would in no way interfere with the all-important factor that the universe is connected and continuous and that journey may be had to all areas thereof by movement on the same physical level with the earth. The universe is connected and continuous. There's no end to it. In Genesis, was this all popping off? Or was it your earth pond being popped off, man? Was it your geothermic hole in the ice? <laughs> which they call Antarctica, which surrounds us. It, but it's a, you know, you can call it ice that goes forever, but it's not just all ice, obviously, right? You have these paradises along the way, Hawa done set up. So which one is you popping off in Genesis? Hey, my noggin, we're just surfing away. The universe is connected and continuous. And that journey may be had to all areas thereof by movement on the same physical level with the earth. You don't got to go up or down. You can stay at the same physical level to get to all areas of the universe. You can stay on the same physical level to get to all areas of the universe. All connected. So them flights and them rockets that they take up, notice they never go straight up. They end up going horizontal at some point, like airplanes. They just tailor, you know, once it gets high enough, watch one of them rocket launches from an airplane. Go on YouTube, say rocket launch from an airplane. And tell me that thing goes straight up or does it end up going just straight, horizontal, on the same physical level. So when they go to Mars and Jupiter and all that stuff, they're just going straight. When they're talking about going to Pluto, they just want to put a satellite that goes straight. <laughs> they're just going straight, man. They got these things in low Earth orbit. Just, you know, below the mesosphere, stratosphere. They still can't figure out how to get past the Van Allen belt. And they're... They're admitting that. So how did they get to the moon, my not? <laughs> Come on, man. You're talking electromagnetism, what they call radiation. You can get to all areas by movement on the same physical level with the Earth. That indicated movement would be straight ahead north from the North Pole and south from the South Pole. And by orientation, we know that the North Pole is the South Pole and the South Pole is the North Pole because they flipped your map. But some scholars say that the North and South Pole are both on the same side, like they're next to each other, like, you know, like polarity, you know, negative, positive charge ions, you know, like working like that. They're not like, oh, there's... Just get off the ball, man. When I talk poles, don't think about poles on the ball. Whenever I talk north, south pole, your mind goes into ball mode. Get out of ball mode, man. Get off that ball, man. You're not on the spinning ball. Look at me, my nug. You're not on the spinning ball. This orientation is so important because once you stop spinning, you see clearly, just like real life. If you really consciously believe you're spinning at over a thousand miles per hour, then subconsciously, you're always you'll always be spinning and you'll never have a still moment in your entire life. I want 
to give that to you, my nigga. I want you to be still, firm, fixed, and immovable. So they can't move you. They can't shake you no more. They can't shake you up. They can't shake you out your things. They can't shake up your mind bone, man. When I say North Pole, South Pole, see, some of y'all still thinking about balls, man. Spheres and stuff. So these poles are polarities and, it, you know, basic polarity or vortexes, you know what I mean? They don't have to be at some point far away from each other. They can be near each other. And this one scholar, I can't think of her name offhand, but, you know, she's from one of them Kremlin states or something. And she was just breaking down, you know what I mean, uh, that according to their science, both of those vortexes, which we call North and South Pole, are located right next to each other near or below South America <laughs> or North America. And they're both on the same side, you know, like next to each other, just, you know, feeding off each other, you know what I'm saying? Doing that, doing that vortex dance, right? And then she said there's a central pole in which they are referring to when they say North Pole, they're really talking about the central pole. Now, where's that? <laughs> and all this is hijack, all this pole business. They don't know shit. You ain't north, you ain't central, you ain't none of these things. You know, these are vortexes. So think vortex when we talk about north and south pole. Photographs taken whenever and wherever in Peru, in Asia Minor, or in our own Rocky Mountains, in no way prove the so called curvature of the earth. So they're in Peru taking pictures. In Asia Minor, so-called, Colorado, there is no proof of any curvature of the Earth. Look up the uh, Bedford level experiment, you know, with two scientists, you know, put a measuring sticks six miles apart and measured the water if there's any rise. or And they came out over and over again using repeatable and observable science, which is science. True science is repeatable and observable. And they kept doing that experiment and they kept getting level planes. Level. You're on a ball. How do you get that six miles of level water? How do you account for that on any type of ball? Take a basketball. Can you have an inch of that be level? No, it has to all curve. There should have been miles of water separation or at least hundreds of feet of curvature. If you're really on a ball, they have a whole formula with six inch for every, you know, uh, is it foot you know, I don't know, or mile or something? We got to get back into that. But there's a you know, whole formula about to measure the curvature. Some say six, some say eight, but there should be measurable curvature. That's all we got to say. You know, whatever the math is, you figure it out. But there should be curvature. Huh? <laughs> they kept getting flat stationary the, the the marker six mile away was at the same level as the marker you know six miles away how do you account for curvature on these bridges like these hundred mile bridges and you know, these long ass bridges do you think they're accounting for thousands of feet of curvature man you think these you know, the Aztecs built a railroad the Chinese built the real all this stuff you think they accounted for curvature going taking an Amtrak from New York to L.A., you know how many miles of curvature <laughs> they would have to be? You think they factor that in to their engineering on these bridges? Do they, do they even think about curvature? Ask them, man. They'll say, hell no, we don't. And that's impossible on a ball. Man, you got to do your own recon, man. I'm out of here, man, for the dismount. They prove only that the utilized lenses could not avoid developing curves that have been mistakenly interpreted as applicable to the Earth's contour. The lens itself created the curvature in the same manner that the optic lens, by grace of its structure and function, creates curves and deceptive horizons within the experience of Everyone. I'll say that again for the dismount. The lens itself created the curvature in the same manner that the optic lens, 
by grace of its structure and function, creates curves and deceptive horizons within the experience of all you knockers. Man, this is World Beyond a Pole. F. I'm a D.O.G. and any one of the best books I ever read, man. And we're going to keep reading it because ain't nobody else touching it. My I'm talking about real experimentation, repeatable and observable evidence. Um, you know, he's going into the uh, 1920s and 30s with Admiral Byrd and, and the uh, Navy were finding more land, over 2,000 miles of more land <laughs> beyond the assumed north and, north and south extremities of the earth, right? The poles are supposed to be the extremity. You can't get no more north than the North Pole. Yeah, he went to 2,000 miles more. That's like damn near L.A. to Texas of more land. Anybody talking about it? You, you think they just let it just chill? Admiral Byrd's doing live interviews saying, man, we found uh, more copper, more this, more that, more that, <laughs> more gold. Like They over there popping off, man. You got Thoth the Moving Island, man. We're going to get back on them Rumsey maps, man. We just pop it off, man. Can't wait to get back in my flat drop first. I'm going to have to holler at these out of Africa, you know what I'm saying? Uh, nah, cause you know what I'm saying? We're we going to have to have an alchemical serpent comp you know, conversation with the cons, you know, and the drag con flow. Must rise, must come, come, because we on Quan. Hey, how to the ether squad, the water to our 500 code keepers. For keeping the water flowing, for Joy World, my naga. For Joy World, my naga. We are uh, in in action. You know, we're in action mode. We are popping off. Nothing else to say. Nothing else to talk about. Nothing to debate. I don't care about nobody's feelings. I don't care where you at with whatever you at with. I got stuff to do. You know, we only came really to YouTube for a short time, and we're so grateful to be able to crystallize in these last what five years or so, man. So. You know, we're moving into our own platform, AI hey, to my eye, my I, my IT Naga, you know what I'm saying? Just man, his vision, man, for the website. You know, like we're we're really going there, man. So just just look out for us, you know, directly at four three two the drop dot com. You can still access the site, it's still up. All the all the archives are all there. And you can dig on it. We will start dropping the radio shows on there. I'm gonna try to start getting it in this week. And uh, it's all happening, man. And, you, you know, the drop chatter box is open. The drop library is all open. But we are making a transition into, uh, you know, a new look, man. So just look out for it. Hey, Nagaville, my Naga. <laughs> we popping off, man. Hey, hi, my Nagas. Keep surfing the way. Yeah, man.